guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Welcome in to what ordinarily is a Reckless Speculation Thursday podcast here. And it's one of the rare occasions that we click that live button on the Score North YouTube channel for a scoop session with Doogie. So we are live right now on the Score North YouTube channel because we have major breaking Timberwolves news. And I'm, I'm just going to read this, and then we're going to put a quarter in Doogie. Doogie has been on the phone over the last 20 minutes with people very, very close and high up to the situation in the Wolves uh, organization here. But... This statement came out about 10 minutes ago. Glenn Taylor confirming the expiration of the option of Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez acquiring controlling interest in the Wolves and Lynx. Under terms of the purchase agreement, the closing was required to occur within 90 days following the exercise notice by Laurie and A-Rod. That 90-day period expired yesterday. Under certain circumstances, the buyer could have been entitled to a limited extension. However, those circumstances did not occur. Quote from Glenn Taylor. I will continue to work with Mark, Alex, and the rest of the ownership group to ensure our teams have the necessary resources to compete at the highest levels on and off the court. And this is the key line. The Timberwolves and Lynx are no longer for sale. So A-Rod and Lori did not complete the transaction, and Glenn Taylor has taken the Timberwolves off the market, Doogie. Yes. Now, how surprised should we be? Here's the bottom line. Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez never had the money to get to the finish line. Where I thought they would be able to get to the finish line, the NBA a few years ago allowed these equity firms to invest that Mark has enough contacts that he would find somebody to get them across the finish line money-wise. My questions always were the board of governors, who next meets mid-April, but at some point here in the next few months, would the board of governors ultimately approve this sales process? When you've got an equity firm contributing the money that they were going to contribute. Now, talks broke down with an equity firm, the Carlisle Group, a few weeks ago. But this other equity group, Dial Capital, D-Y-A-L Capital, who has been approved previously by the NBA, has a stake in some other franchises. Like, I was led to believe they were willing to contribute. So I am working on trying to figure out what broke down with that equity firm. But yes, at this point, the team is off the market. I know the question is out there, hey, Do Mark and Alex now have limited ownership? Somebody high up. And by the way, I plan on connecting. I should be able to connect with Glenn Taylor himself before the day is over to get on the record clarity on all this. But the belief is, as of now, Mark and Alex retain what they've already invested. So they are limited partners. What I want to find out is, does Glenn now have the opportunity, if he so chooses, to repurchase the shares at the price he sold them to those guys. Mm. So can Glenn now buy out Mark and Alex? But I don't even know if like that minutia matters. I think what people were hoping for, some, right, that Mark and Alex would become majority owners. That is not happening. This is Glenn Taylor's team. They could not get to the finish line money-wise. Wow. But I'm just telling you, I mean, everything we've talked about going back many months, I don't know how surprised a lot of people should be. There was some other stuff out there. So selective listening, selective reading, fine, whatever. But like from everything we've laid out in this space, what I've laid out on Channel 5, this was always a mucky process, a wonky process. There were always questions about how this would end up finishing. Well, now we have the answer that Glenn is going to retain majority ownership. So do we think that that the, the Board of Governors, which had not obviously uh, taken a vote on the process because it didn't get done, do we think they were going to reject this? Or is this Glenn said, hey, the time has passed. Basically, the team is worth more now. As you said, the process has been wonky. Going way back, 
Um, I think you talked about this, but but I mean, Glenn was literally having trouble get getting Mark and Alex to return his messages. Which you know, if you're if I'm going to sell you something for a huge price, we sh should be in contact. So, do we think that this had to do with a genuine concern about the fact that the league was going to say no, or do we think that this goes to the fact that Glenn looked at the entire landscape as a businessman and said, you know what? The time has passed. The date has passed. It's done. So, so like that, it wasn't even a board of governors were going to reject it. It was just a, if you can't get out of your own way in a process that, and, and Dukes, just, just to be clear, I think the one thing to point out is in 2024, if you're going to buy an NBA team or an, a national football league team, and you can't write a check immediately, there are red flags. Like, this is not 1976. These aren't the Cavaliers. Hey, they got sold to a guy that's... You know, as far as I, I know, Matt Ishbia with the Suns and Jimmy Haslam's group wrote checks for the for the Suns and the Bucks, respectively, and they own the team the next day. So do we think that this is a basically Glenn just not even knowing if this was going to be rejected, but more importantly saying... Hey, the day passed, the team is worth way more now, or I don't even trust you not to move the team. And so that's why today's news came out. I would say more the latter, maybe the former, but it never got to that point with the Board of Governors. That was right. more me right. wondering aloud what ultimately the Board of Governors approve with the way this thing was going to be super leveraged. But that's just me opining on that part. More so the latter, that they just didn't get to the finish line on the money. Now, you cite those two situations. What about Utah in the last couple of years? What about the Dallas Mavericks mm -hmm. in the last, what, six months? You're right. You need to be able to write an enormous check immediately. Mark and Alex. Now, hey, the way the NBA has it set up with these equity firms, it's okay. It just It's a slipperier slope. But Mark and Alex never had the money. Let's just make that very clear. Yeah. They've never had the money to be majority owners. And it was always going to be difficult, not impossible. That's why I thought at least money-wise it would get to the finish line because of the involvement now of equity firms. That's new in the last, I don't know, five-ish years or something like that. Like if we go back 20 years, that was not a thing in the NBA. But now the NBA allows equity firms to invest. So I just thought, because I know Mark has a ton of contacts. Heck, Mark is highly successful. Right, But it's another level to be a majority owner in the NBA. And Mark and Alex cannot get to that point. Hey, what was the, the, final, the final chunk of money needed here? So they had already put in, what, $400 million? Yeah, I what, need to get what, the exact number. I mean, okay. hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, I mean, just everything happening in the last 15, 20 minutes. Me on one call, I have yet to do a ton of research. I should go back downstairs to my desk and look at my notes, but I don't have the exact number, Phil, okay. but we are that's, talking. That's I don't know if the exact number matters in this instance right now, but we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. And, and you, and you say that <clears throat> hundreds of millions of dollars. What's interesting is Mark Laurie, who's he's an entrepreneur. He has built whatever net worth he has off of, was it di uh, diapers.com. And he also was the architect for, for Walmart's uh, online inf uh, infrastructure e essentially yeah. e-commerce and uh in one of his latest ventures is called wonder and he just raised 700 million dollars in their latest round for his latest startup wonder so clearly like he obviously has connections to and by the way the nba right now the timberwolves according to forbes this is at the beginning of the season the NBA's least valuable franchises include this list includes the Timberwolves near the bottom. The Memphis Grizzlies are the least valuable NBA franchise and Forbes has them valued at $2.4 billion. The Timberwolves are valued according to Forbes at $2.5 billion. So the selling price that was agreed upon and correct me if I'm wrong here, two years ago, three years ago, whenever we go back in time, is nearly a billion dollars less than Forbes is valuing this franchise right now. Phil, so this is a highly discounted franchise, and they still couldn't come up with the funding? I know. It was such a sweetheart of a deal. Now, closer to three years, right? April of 2021. Mm -hmm. So a lot can change over, you know, a two-and-a-half-year period, okay? 
But still, such a sweetheart deal, just over $1.5 billion. By the way, if Glenn Taylor, and at some point, it'll change. I get it in the statement. He says the Wolves and Lynx are not for sale. That could change with one phone call in the next, you know, after the season, in the summer, right? July, August, September, if the right people reach out to him, right? I mean, Glenn is all about keeping the team here. There are people. Like, if he wanted to sell the team today, he could make, Phil, I'm just telling you this, he could make north of $3 billion, Agreed. But it would have to be with, hey, we're moving the team to Vegas or somewhere else, right? So Glenn is all about, right? because I know Glenn has his detractors, okay? But Glenn is all about... He verbalized this to me in a conversation on the record a few weeks ago that is on the Scoop podcast. Heck, I highly recommend people listen to that conversation. I can't remember if I put it on the Scoop. If you do a Glenn Taylor KSTP, right, we're all one big happy family, Hubbard Broadcasting. My TV job, KSTP, I had about a 24-minute conversation with Glenn, like March 1st or March 2nd, so earlier this month. You can hear the doubt in his voice. Heck, fast forward We talked on the court stuff for 10, 12, 13 minutes, Mm -hmm. about 13, 14 minutes in for about 10, eight, nine minutes, something like that. We talked about the ownership situation. You can just hear the doubt in his voice, right? About whether this would ultimately get to the finish line. But Phil, I'm just telling you, I mean, Forbes can value them at whatever the number is. Like what did the Phoenix Sun sell for? Three or three, one. Yeah. The Wolves aren't that far off from Phoenix. I'm just telling you, like, Glenn could easily, I'm telling no. you, especially if it's, hey, do whatever you want with the team, but Glenn's not willing to do that. But Glenn could certainly sell the team for north of $3 billion. Now, in terms of owners keeping the team here with the arena situation, everything else, maybe it's not quite three in this moment, but I think it is north of $2.5 billion. I wonder, too, if, um, and, and Glenn, I, I feel like Glenn is going on this one again to, to get heat, and Believe me, Glenn, throughout the course of the history of the Wolves, deserves heat for lots of things. I wonder, too, though, if he saw this as saving the team again because of this. If they don't have the money, so, like, if they don't have the funds to pay for this thing immediately, they need a new building here, and they know that. Your patience is going to run thin real quick. And and I don't think you're going to get a – I you know, we built an arena and a stadium for everybody so far, so I don't think that we're going to do that – immediately again um i think glenn taylor might have saved this be from becoming norm green 2.0 which is a not necessarily really really well-funded group or guy in norm's case and part of his thing i mean glenn was a, or norm was a terrible guy but part of at the end of the day part of it was he didn't have countless millions and billions to keep pumping into to things arena improvements blah 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 so I wonder if this was just the final red flag of, because I do think the most important thing for Glenn is to keep the team here. Yeah. Like, I don't think Glenn wants yes. to die. There is no deathbed. Yes. Because he saved it in 96. He saved this team yeah, was trying to move. Yeah. But yeah. Or yeah. Mm-hmm. 94 to, to New Orleans. So anyway, I wonder if this just comes down to a large portion of that and not trusting Lori and A-Rod not to relocate this thing, let's say, within two or three years. I will tell you, April of 21, May of 21, heck, December of 21, early in 22, heck, midway through 22, Glenn was all aboard. He really wanted to make sure. this thing work. Heck, sure. maybe in the last six months, he really wanted this thing to work. But I will tell you, Phil, you alluded to me having a conversation right before we hopped on here live, a conversation with somebody very high up that is close to this situation. I was told Glenn is plenty fine with the way this thing has now unfolded. At this end game, Glenn is not frustrated. He's not bitter. He's not disappointed. He is plenty fine with this end result. Do you sense, and I know that like you're still gathering information, and at some point we have to cut you loose so you can go and do even more digging on this, but... Do you sense that this is a complete falling out between Glenn, A-Rod, and Mark Lurie? Or do you sense that there's still a path forward for either those two guys to remain as minority partners or a path to eventually put together a group where they could be majority owners? Well, I mean, go back to the statement, right? Read the statement, that sentence right before the headline that the Wolves and Lynx are no longer for sale where he alludes to still working with, right, I'm paraphrasing, but you have the statement in front of you. I will continue to work with Mark and Alex and and the rest of the ownership group. And this person also told me 
who's very close to the situation, close to Glenn, that the belief is right now, some fluidity here, but right now there is an assumption that Mark and Alex, the money they have already invested, that isn't going anywhere. So that they are going to remain limited partners. But Judd, you said it. Glenn Heck acknowledged this a few weeks ago with me. Like the dialogue has been so minimal. Him with Mark, him with Alex. Going back a few months. Like just about zero. And I just don't know how they weren't talking. And I get it's not like they're obligated to talk. But as you're this close to the finish line... Why wouldn't the direct parties, instead of having others around you dealing with this, why wouldn't you have direct contact? And Mark and Alex did not have that with Glenn going back months. They still haven't. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Absolutely wild. Um, Yeah, I just, this is, they just hit their 50th win for the first time since Kevin Garnett left. We should be celebrating. First time in 20 years, right? We have to go back to the 03, 04 season, right? Correct Mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Last time they won 50 games. Yeah. This should be a celebration today. This is an unreal accomplishment for where the bar is with this franchise. This should be a celebration today with the Wolves. Think about the enormity of tomorrow in Denver. How much fun that's going to be. And hey, on the court wise, they are not impacted one iota by all this. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. But still in this moment, when we should be celebrating the Wolves moving up to the two seed, right? Because they have tiebreaker over OKC. That Denver lost last night, that one seed. Now, we can debate whether the one seed is a big deal or not, but like to me, at least get to two. So win enough games here, these final 10, to get that two seed. If Denver is the one, fine. Like To me, if you can avoid Denver until the Western Conference Finals, sign me up. If you can have home court first round and second round, so two seed, that to me is the ideal path, especially to me if you're opening up against Sacramento. I don't want anything to do with Dallas. In the first round. And hey, after watching Phoenix last night, you may not want Phoenix in the first round. But point is, Phil, we should be celebrating the Wolves today. Yeah. Yeah. Here this morning, we're talking about uh, the sales process collapsing. Hey, one other question on this press release. The most vague line of these four, there's four paragraphs. The most vague paragraph is under certain circumstances, the buyer could have been entitled to a limited extension. However, those circumstances <laughs> did not occur. The lawyers were in the room. That's well, a really I mean, they've well-crafted asked for an extension vague... before. So, yeah. um, like, that's where I need to dig. Did they ask for another extension? And at some point, Glenn just said, I've granted you how many extensions along the way here? Uncle, mercy, enough is enough. Here's one, you guys. Or did they from, not ask because they know they can't get to the finish line? I'm working on that part of it. From Woj. He just tweeted this. The relationship between Taylor and his successors disintegrated over the past two plus years, sources tell ESPN. Lori Rodriguez did raise the money necessary to uh, purchase the controlling interest, but Taylor contends they didn't meet contractual deadlines throughout the transition. You know what? So he he got wind of something. I I gotta say, I'm gonna say, I've been one of the biggest Glenn Taylor criticizers for 10 years on these microphones. And I stand by everything I've said about him as one of the worst owners of a professional sports franchise, all the muck that this franchise has been through under his watch. But at the end of the day, this is about money. And and I we'll see what happens. And I, I'm, Doogie's going to do more reporting on this, but they've had two plus years to put together funds for a highly discounted NBA franchise. One of the best deals you're ever going to find in the NBA, NFL, any of the major professional sports. And I'm and I'm supposed to believe that, hey, we had the money. What's going on? We had the money. This is. Well, I mean, it's clear which side is giving Woj that information, which is fine, because I'm telling you, I was led to believe the money wasn't going to be an issue. The Board of Governors approving this process was going to be an issue. But them getting to the finish line money wise. Now, if they did, if that is true. And yes, I need to go downstairs and make a lot of calls. And I may not have this answer today. This may be down the road, right? But like if they do legitimately have the money, is there now litigation? Like if they have the money coming, Dukes, this like what's next, right? If they have the money, if that is true, they had the money, right? Like that press they're going to sue, aren't they? For a lawsuit. That the the, the Timberwolves lawyer. This has lawsuit written all over it, right? Yes. Glenn Glenn's people. 
the the press release that Phil read is a preemptive strike for the suit because what they're saying, what they're going to contend is once that date passed, I don't care if you had, but they're going to say we had the money, we were on the doorstep to give it to Glenn and Glenn wouldn't take it. Yes, this is, I think it's safe to say that these two sides are done playing nice. Oh, yes. Wow. Dude. So th- I think this they were done a few months court. ago, but yes. Are but we not going to see yes. I mean, just based on lack of dialogue, I think that occurred <laughs> well, a while ago. Well, yes. gonna put it- it's now notched, you know, up, up a rung or two now. <laughs> Mark is Jeez. going to put his shoes on and leave the building. By the way, Mark has not been to any. I haven't, I haven't seen Mark at a game all year. A Rod's been to a bunch been. of games. Yeah, he's, he's been, been on, though. Yeah, he's he been, been on Glenn's been. side now. Mark has, and A Rod. Well, what's sort of weird too is Mark and A Rod don't sit in the same seats that they sat in. Mark is on the side of Becky and Glenn. Yeah, the the whole thing's weird. I I don't trust any of it now. Wow. So okay, um, let's take a breath here. And, and tell our audience about our friends at Zero Res. Okay. Which is here to help you spring clean, okay? We're going to have nice weather going forward, and it's time for you to have a nice clean house moving into these spring and summer months. And Zero Res is here with their Score North special, which is three rooms Zero Resified, starting at just $129. This month, take $75 off when you get those air ducts Zero Res clean. 9520res or zeroresminnesota.com say you want the score north special spell it forward or backwards it spells the same zero res the twins are back today and by the way thank you guys we just hit 2000 subscribers on our brand new score north twin show youtube channel we're going to have two different episodes for you today we'll break down the the 26 man roster do a random twin of the week and then we'll uh, launch the debut of the score north twin show extra innings with declan leading the charge uh, so you can check that out. If you want to go see the actual Twins for their home opener next week, April 4th, 3, 10 p.m. against the Guardians, you can do so. Twins.com slash tickets. First 10,000 fans get an opening weekend beanie. Twins.com slash tickets. So, well, any f- feel free to tie up any other Wolves loose ends here for now, Doogie. Otherwise, it'd be fun to talk about quarterback pro day week and the Vikings being all over the country. North Carolina today with, with Drake May. Sure, well... Somebody didn't realize, I put this out on TV about a month ago. I mean, in terms of Wolves talkers, like this would be like, if you're making a list, like this is number 150, but let me get it on official record here. I was asked about Jalen Clark, the rookie from UCLA, coming back from the Achilles injury. Like we thought maybe he'd be back by now. Next time we'll see him playing a game, no setback or anything, but next time we'll see him playing a game, Vegas Summer League. So he will not play this entire season, but... I think there's a lot to like about the kid. I think he has a chance to be a rotation guy down the road. Before we get to Vikings, let's just tie it all around here with money talks. Pharrell Payne, Gophers basketball big man in the transfer portal. Here we go. This is all about money. Whether it's Kansas, whether it's Nebraska, Iowa State potentially. Put it this way. The Gophers, I'm told, put a nice offer on the table, but the Gophers are still painfully behind. NIL wise. And by the way, can I just go on the record? I hate NIL. Let's just call it what it is. Pay for play, free agency, whatever. It's not name image likeness. There's nothing to do with name image likeness. It's pay for play. That Pharrell Payne is going to get paid a lot of money Mm -hmm. elsewhere. That the Gophers feel like they put a good offer on the table, but he'll make more money elsewhere. So now Pharrell Payne joins Joshua Ola Joseph. That's more about playing time. Those two guys, the local guys in the transfer portal. So why wouldn't Christie leave if, if he doesn't turn pro? Well, because, you know, I mean, like money isn't the end game there, I guess. I mean, he can get some money here. The money he can get here will okay. satisfy him. Okay. It, you know, I mean, the know. family's in a good spot, right? Okay. That, like, his best path, if he decides to come back, doesn't keep his name in the NBA draft mm-hmm. because he may just keep his name in the NBA draft like his brother did, end up going second round. You know, get at least one year guaranteed to start his pro career because this is a weak draft come June. But if he does come back, it's because he feels like this program, this situation gives him the best chance to be a first round pick in 2025. All right. We have fire alarm testing happening in my. Oh, that's what that was? Right now, I so. thought you turned like another station on. I, th- I was like, you're listening to the score no. from Chicago. It's like no, 70, it's, the score. Cubs opening day. It's fire alarm testing day here. So this oh, happened last year, I think, on the same day. Yeah, was, here you go. 
Oh, that's your attention, please. Now you're not supposed to leave, right? Are we no, sure it's, it's just it's, a drill? It's just a drill. I just got the email. Like there's no smoke okay. in your room right now, is there? Uh, well, there is. It's coming, from, it's coming from my head yeah. right now. because it's coming, the from the Tim- it's coming from Target Center. <laughs> Target Center's ablaze. Ten more years of Glenn Taylor ownership. So, uh, hey, it's Pro Day week, Doogie. Yeah, so Drake quickly May on the today. Vikings, yeah, because I need to get back downstairs. Quickly yeah, on the go, Vikings. Go, go. So, I was told this meeting, so Ian Rappaport quoted Jaden Daniels' agent this time yesterday morning, saying the Vikings were going to be among teams to have some sort of meeting with Jaden after yesterday's Pro Day. I am told... That meeting did not take place. Don't know all the circumstances. May have just been Josh McCown needed to hop on a flight to head to Chapel Hill for Drake May today or whatever he needed to do. The Vikings had some other representation there at LSU too, including a defensive line coach. But McCown was there to watch Jaden. At least that's my understanding. And we were told, led to believe, that Jaden and the Vikings were going to converse. And that certainly was the plan. And hey, it may happen down the road. Wouldn't be shocked. If something happens down the road, but in the moment of yesterday, late afternoon, after Jaden's pro day, I am told this thought of meeting Jaden with the Vikings never happened. Mm. Wow. Darren Doogie Wolfson, everyone from the five. I will get back to work and Drake May today. The Vikings are going to spend some more time with May. So yeah, the Vikings will have enough eyeballs in Chapel Hill today, but the idea remains as Kevin O'Connell is enjoying some spring break at Disney World with with the family, that Kevin's going to get some some more face time. He's already had some face time going back to the combine, what have you, but sure. more face time with with these elite quarterbacks, including JJ McCarthy before before the week is over. Get nice. back to work, Dukes. I, I just want to say too that like good Doogie work. Doogie has been Doogie is so good at his job, and I'm just gonna pump your tires here, Doogie, before you go. People, Can you be my agent. P, I'm, we can discuss. <laughs> People were. You kept coming out for six months just telling people, hey, I just, it feels weird. I'm hearing some things. You've been super plugged in the entire way, and and you didn't budge, and you've nailed this, this tenuous wolf well, situation. Thank you. I don't even awesome know if I fully job, nailed it. It just, it was wonky the whole way. So I wanted to verbalize that part of it. I did think money wise they would find a way. I just didn't know about the Board of Governors. They said they so, did. Like, I wasn't like, yes, you know, come. April 20th, Mark and Alex are going to be majority owners. Like, I was never, you know, singing that. But, like, I just I wanted to verbalize everything I was hearing, right? I mean, I take pride in what I do. I reach out to a lot of people. Yes, Journalism 101, I ask myself this question all the time. Why is this person lying to me, right? Am I being given false information, right? But when you hear the same thing from multiple people, right, I wanted to express that in this space. So that was what I was hearing going back well over six months that this entire process was just wonky, right? For lack of a better term, it was wonky. And yeah. so like this being the end result, I can't say I'm overly shocked. Put it that way. There he is. Darren Doogie Good Wilson. Talk. Every Tuesday Thanks, and Dukes. Thursday here. All right, Doogie, boys. Take it we'll easy. Be following uh, the rest of your reporting today. And uh, if you haven't already, please click the like button and the subscribe button here on the score North YouTube channel. This has been a very rare live emergency scoop session with our guy, Darren Doogie Wolfson. Uh, we'll see you guys for a Score North twin show, maybe two of them actually today. And Purple Daily, it's Thor's Day on Purple Daily, so a huge day across Score North podcast.